Are we actually going to be able to go down there, do you think, Harry? Because Yeah, we'll be, right. we'll be all right. Should we just have a walk? Then? Well, it is. There's, there's a security guy downstairs. I just oh, asked okay. him, can you just pop there? See? Are, you, are, you mic- are you mic'd up still? Yeah, yeah still mic'd up. I haven't turned it off or anything. Yeah, I yeah. left it. Do you ever miss it? No. No. Just I, get, I get asked that a lot. Yeah, I bet. If somebody said to me, do you want to put a red shirt, red well shirt on and run out and play a game one minute before kickoff, I'd do it tomorrow. Yeah. And I probably could play to a reasonable level. Because, you know, that's, that's the easy bit. But it's, if, if you said to me, oh, we've got to go this way, sorry. If, um, if you said to me, do you want to do everything it takes to get to that point? Yeah. I'd be like, I don't want to go no. through that. Like, that's the bit, see, so that's what I find, that's what I found really hard, was the, yeah. you know, the day-to-day 99% that people don't see. Yeah. That was, that was tough. Mm. You miss the glory, and you miss playing in front of all those people and that. I'll probably never get that. I won't, I won't get that feeling back again of walking on the pitch and have yeah. 75,000 people in the, ch- in the stadium cheering you on sort of thing. I won't get that. Uh, I'm not going to get that when you sell a property or when you acquire one, you know, like it's just, but yeah, the, 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 the day-to-day routine of playing and training and traveling and injury was, got, was enough. Yeah. You know, that was enough for me. So mm. in a weird way, I don't, I can accept that that part of my life is over and I don't have to do that again. Yeah. So, um, I'm, you know, I'm comfortable with what I, I achieved what I wanted to. Yeah, I could have done more and I wanted to do more, but I feel lucky that, oh, I gotta get the key. I feel lucky that I managed to do what, what I could do, you know? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Cheers, guys. Thank you. So this is the players' entrance. This is, but this yeah. is all weird. It's like you get a, a tour of the stadium behind <laughs> yeah. closed doors. So, because we're sort of like level minus one here, right. so you would have come down that ramp. Yeah. So the ramp comes down, and then it comes here. Yeah. And then these double doors open, then you get like the Welsh choir, male voice choir, normally yeah. here, singing all the Welsh songs. Then obviously you have the massive dragon there. Yeah. And then this is like the sort of players' entrance up, which is all branded out when you when yeah. you're playing, you know, to the changing rooms. And this is, these are the bits that walk the stairs, like. I don't miss how it felt two hours pre-match when I walked up here, like, shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, which is why you've got to keep talking yourself into that positive frame of mind. But like, yeah. that was like going through that, you'd think, what am I putting myself through this for? It's not yes. worth it, you yeah. know? But that was hard. It's amazing how I can, I look back in hindsight and it's amazing. But at the time you're just thinking, I'll do anything to get taken out of this. Yeah. But when you do get taken out of that cauldron of pressure, you think, You'll do anything just to go head first, straight yeah. back into it, you know? Oh, they locked it again. Right. Did, did yeah, it maybe just... it's that thing there. Yeah. There we go. We're good. Oh, oh, wow. It's like spooky there dark, isn't it? I used to come out and do the anthem here, and then the wives always sit on that first row. Yeah. So I'd always like just like put my hand up or wink at my wife, and she'd wink back to me. I remember the first time we did up in the BBC box, which was up there when I wasn't yeah. playing. They sang the anthems. I looked across, and I was my wife wasn't there, and I thought, I'm never gonna have that special moment again, you know. And when this place is full, and you're sort of lined up there, and you got all these seventy-five thousand people, and all you see is people's faces all pointing that direction. Like that's such a such a weird feeling. You'll never get that back. Mm. So I miss that. You miss those moments because you know that's like things which hardly anyone can achieve, and that's like you know amazing things to go through. But then it's just like yeah, the pressure or the thought of my shoulder popping out once more or blowing my knee ligament again. If I went through that, that would have just crushed me if I went through that one more time. So that's mm. why I thought like that was the right time to go. Yeah. But still love coming back and- You come here and watch games a lot, do you think? Yeah, well, because every time Wales play here, actually, since I finished, they probably played here, should have been four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Probably had about 13 games here since mm. I finished playing. And every game I've worked for, because the BBC cover all Wales home games. Mm. So I've just worked up in the BBC oh, box. I do hospitality here because I work for the union anyway, yeah. the Welsh Rugby Union. So I'm here every match day. So I've been here every match day since I've retired, just mm. working for well, the Welsh Rugby Union and BBC. So I'm always here. So it's, and that's like a privilege in itself, you know. Yeah. But it's weird because when you're in the pressure cooker of playing, you're in this bubble, you don't see all the hype that's going on about the game outside. When I'm here, and I'm here way before the match, and I can see the stage and slowly build over hours. It is weird. I look at it, I'm like, oh my goodness, I went through that yeah. like 74 times. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and then you sort of like, you appreciate it. You try to appreciate it when you're playing. You appreciate it more when you're gone because mm. you see it from you see it from Joe Public's perspective, which you don't see it when you're playing because you're doing everything you can not to do that because you want to try and you don't want to make it out to be this amazing, massive spectacle because that's when you're not you're going to lose focus. You mm. know, so. 
as a player, you're constantly trying to live in this little bubble deliberately, so you stay away from that. But it's great to appreciate or to try and appreciate what you're doing at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So we have four quick fire questions that we do at the end of every podcast. Okay. Yeah. But quick fire can be as long as you want. Yeah, I, I um, won't waffle on. Yeah, well, I'll make sure that your knee might go. If we stand up yeah, too long. <laughs> you saw me getting up from the table, yeah. then I always just go, oh, I wait for it to click out and then I yeah. get going. Then. Yeah. So, best advice you ever received? Be true to yourself. That was from Andy McCann again, and uh, he just said, be true to yourself. Kind of in layman's terms, you know, do what you want to do, go with your gut. But um, yeah, my best advice that I was given to myself and that I would give is just be true to yourself. Mm. Worst advice you ever received? I remember when I was going to be captain and uh, I spoke to an ex-captain and he said, if somebody makes a mistake, then you've got to call them out. You've got to like not be quite abrasive. Well, yeah, he said you've got to be quite like abrasive and you've got to sort of stamp your authority. But in my head, I remember thinking, I don't agree with that. Mm. Uh, I didn't say it to his face, but I thought I don't agree with that. And that's when I thought people, not at elite rugby anyway, don't make mistakes on purpose. No. We're all human. We all make mistakes. If somebody made a mistake, I probably... And if it was, I thought, like a repeat error, I'd probably speak to them in the pri in private, not in the company of the whole team, and call them out and completely belittle them because mm. I think they would lose respect for me. I'd lose respect for a captain if they did that to me. So um, that probably wasn't great advice. Yeah. Um, I'd rather much try and be a bit more understanding, speak to someone in private and try and sort the situation out that way. Mm. Okay. So is there anything, one thing particularly in the world that you think is wrong that you'd like to change? Is this anything now? Mm. Anything. Um, I, I'm really sort of, I can drive the car and uh, I hate seeing, but basically it sounds a bit like, what's the word, like not deep, I'm not a hippie or anything, but just peace. Mm. Like I hate um, all these ISIS stories, I hate terrorism, I hate animal cruelty, mm. all these things. I think if everybody, I'm not saying I'm perfect, I'm not perfect by any stretch of imagination, but if people were as kind to people and animals like I was, mm then the world would 100% be a better place. So yeah, I hate, I hate cruelty to, to all forms of cruelty from people to animals mm. to, to test it. Yeah, all right, great. Um, this podcast has a theme of disruptive. It's called The Disruptive Entrepreneur, but it's kind of morphed over the years, not just about entrepreneurship. And I'm quite selfish on this podcast. I just interview cool people like you who I like. I don't really care if they fit the mold or not. But I always ask everyone, what does disruptive mean to you? I guess... Being disruptive would be, and I guess we touched upon it in, in the podcast, but being disruptive would be kind of being unconventional, going outside probably the regular person's comfort zone in, in a need to achieve. You know, that's being disruptive. Not going, kind of like the old quote, it's, it's a cliche, be a shepherd, not a sheep. Mm. Don't follow the crowd and do what you're expected to do. What's going to make you different? What's going to give you that X factor? What makes you stand out from the rest, you know? And that's often be unconventional and step outside your comfort zone. Mm. This has been so much fun. And awesome. um, when you went to the toilet, Harry just said how great he thought it was. Ah, oh, thank you. Sam, thank you very much. Cheers. Well, thanks for Cheers. having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank Lovely. you.